What's up internet? This is Mike uh, with Mike Jones Knife and Tool and today I'm doing some finishing grinding on some stainless steel. So as I said, uh, I'm going to be finishing grinding uh, some of the stainless here. Um, they've just come back from heat treating. Now when they come back they're, uh, they're covered in some scaling and when you send them away uh, I don't grind my bevels all the way up nice and high. Um, you have to keep a lot of meat on them so that they don't warp. Um, chef knives, kitchen knives, mostly what I do in stainless, um, tend to be long and kind of thin. Uh, so I don't, I don't take too much of the beef out of the middle of the blade. I try to leave them nice and fat so that they've got every chance to stay as straight as possible. Um, and then when they come back, you have to grind them really slowly and carefully and keep them cool to get your bevels up nice and high to make it a really sharp kitchen knife. Uh, and then you clean off the scaling and um, put a handle on it. So here's the process of how I do it. So my first step when I'm grinding these after heat treating uh, is with the 36 grit belt. It's a pretty aggressive uh, belt to be grinding, um, but stainless already grinds pretty slowly, plus this is now hardened. So uh, there's a lot of forgiveness in that. It's um, it makes it a little easier to stay online. My first uh, my first grind. I'm gonna just focus on working the bevel up the blade here. Uh, right now it's really low, uh, and I got a lot more material to move off of there. But I'm just gonna work it up the face of the blade. I'm not too concerned about keeping my line straight um, as long as I don't get way out of bounds. It's all right because there's going to be a lot more stages and a lot more grits to work through where I can clean all that up. Also, I'm not going to get too close to the edge here. Um, anytime you're heat treating anything, you don't want to get super sharp. You definitely want to leave a few mil on the edge there, <clears throat> or a, a, you know, a millimeter of thickness along your edge. Otherwise, it'll get burnt off when it gets that hot. So uh, I'm not going to take too much off of that edge. Again, that can all be done later on. I'm just focusing on moving this up the face of the knife. Now, how hot is too hot? Um, I've always got a bucket of water nearby where I can dunk this guy and cool him off. Um, I generally will just grind until I can feel the heat with my fingers. That's why I can't grind with gloves on. As soon as I can feel the heat, then I know that things are getting too hot. As long as color change doesn't occur, you're pretty safe to say that you haven't ruined your temper at all. So you can definitely feel the heat way, way earlier than color change happens. So as soon as I can feel it, I dunk it in water and keep going. So quick word on where to grind on your belt. You'll see a lot of guys who are grinding and they'll just grind on a, an extreme angle like this and they'll only use the very edge of the belt. That's, um, that's gonna get a lot of material off of your steel in a hurry but you're only using this very edge of the knife and you have the possibility of, of stalling or something in one place and creating a big groove in your grind. I like to try as best I can to keep my knife fairly flat using a lot of the face of the blade. This will make sure that everything stays really consistent along the full edge of your grind. You won't get any big deep gouges along there and it'll stay nice and flat and also you're using the whole belt. So there's where we're at. Just moving the bevel, like I say, up the blade, as opposed to where down where it started. Trying to keep it as smooth as possible. A little touch up here, it's no big deal. Clean that up later. So now I'll do the other side and uh, we'll move on to another grit. I always get one side to where I like it and then try to duplicate that on the other side.
Sometimes you have to come back and modify this one to get it to where this one ends up. So there's where we're at. Just moving the bevel, like I say, up the blade as opposed to where down where it started. Trying to keep it as smooth as possible. A little touch up here, it's no big deal. Clean that up later. So now I'll do the other side and uh, we'll move on to another grit. I always get one side to where I like it and then try to duplicate that on the other side. Sometimes you have to come back and modify this one to get it to where this one ends up. So there we go. Both sides beveled. A little hump here. That's fine. I'll clean that up later. Um, but what I'm looking for is uniform from side to side. Uh, one of the spots that I look for is right at the spine, right where the bevel leaves the spine. I try to look for that to be in the same place. And also back here where the bevel enters the, uh, the blade where it starts, I try for that to be pretty even. And that gives me a pretty good idea of if that distance is the same there and there. Um, again, this is just the first first step. Lots of time later on to clean up anything like that weird little hump that'll go away, and uh, and we'll keep going from there. So take off the 36 grit, and uh, the next step would be a 60. So a couple of quick things I thought about while I was uh, grinding that. Number one, um, stainless. When you're grinding um, with, with stainless versus high carbon, someone gave me the tip that um, it's a good idea to separate your belts and keep your stainless belts just stainless. As soon as you grind a high carbon uh, blade with a belt, uh, he said that it contaminates the belt. And then if you go and grind your stainless with that, it'll, I guess, embed pieces of high carbon uh, into your stainless steel. Um, I'm not sure if that's true or not, but I don't really want to risk it and have one of my stainless blades start to rust all of a sudden. So that's one good tip. Another thing is if you make any weird mistakes, like this little hump, don't try to fix it all in one pass. You're just going to make more mistakes. Go nice and slow and blend it into the rest of the bevel. Don't just try to force it as fast as you can. Take your time. Do it slowly, and it'll all come together. It won't seem like it at first. It'll seem like, you know, it's moving really slowly and nothing's happening, but just take your time, do lots of passes, keep checking it, and, uh, and it'll all come together. All right, so that's a uh, bit of work done with the 80 grit belt. Um, as you can see, I started cleaning off the scale. You want to do that first because it's really going to mess up your your line of your bevel there at the top of your bevel. So you want to do that first. And then as far as grinding your bevel goes, uh, it's kind of more of the same thing, just really smoothing out everything from the 36. Uh, any major changes that you have to do, um, this is the time to do that. Uh, keeping your line nice and clean. Uh, as clean as you can and um, also you want to get a lot closer to sharp not quite sharp yet um, still a little bit a few more grits to go through to get there but if you've left yourself a few thou there you want to get that pretty close and uh, and then you're then you're pretty much done with your 80 grit next I'm going to move on to uh, a 120 
Um, with that one, I'm just going to be really just finishing cleaning off the, uh, the scale and then just uh, really polishing the blade onto a 220, just more polishing there the whole time, getting closer and closer on the edge to sharp and, uh, and just kind of slowly refining and refining and refining as you go through the grits. And then um, this one I think is going to get uh, hand rubbed anyways, a hand rubbed finish with a pretty high grit sandpaper. So I'm not going to stress too hard about my line here, uh, but that does help keep you pretty consistent in your bevel grind. So it's a, it's a good gauge for that. Well, there you have it. This is uh, polished with up to a, a ceramic structured abrasive. This one's rated uh, X9 or something like that. It's uh, it's pretty high. Anyways, it's uh, it's the finest one that I can buy where I buy them. So um, it's a pretty nice polished finish. Um, I know I said I was gonna do a a hand rub finish on this one with some sandpaper, but now I'm not so sure. I kind of like the way it's <laughs> turning out. So there you have it. Now I'm going to wrap the thing in masking tape so that it doesn't get uh, scratched up at all uh, during the rest of the process. It'll look like this. And, uh, and that's it. So that's how it goes from uh, fresh from the heat treater to ready for a handle. So thanks a lot for watching. I'll be back with another video soon.